Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Cookies Enabled. In today's episode, we are building off of a previous one, the Cookies Explained episode. We're going to dive into the myth of is your phone listening to you and your Alexa or your Siri or your Google Home Assistant? We're going to find out in today's episode. Hey Google, are you ready to show them what you're made of? Yes I am, Will. Now, let's learn something new, together. Okay, well after that awesome intro, we are going to ask Google a few more questions in a little bit here, but let's dive into the explanation uh, that gets us to this episode, which if you haven't already, uh, just go ahead, pause this episode and jump back online to our YouTube library and find the episode named Cookies Explained. And that will fill in the gap that's missing here and all the information that you're lacking. So let's pick up where that one leaves off. And in that episode, we, we explain how your computer leaves a file that shows not only what you search, but where you go online, what you're clicking on and as well as what you are purchasing and not purchasing. So all of that is li listed in our previous episode. And in here, we're gonna break down how that comes out to how your phone is listening to you or your Google Assistant may be listening to you as well. Now, some of these devices are programmed to be listening to you consistently, like your Google Home speaker. So we're gonna exempt a few things here and just primarily focus on your phone. Now, uh, there's a few uh, stories that I will list down below in the description uh, if you want to read those of people that claim that they have been on a phone call with somebody saying how they needed a blender for let's let's just throw that example out there. And uh, then later that afternoon, they were on their phone just scrolling through Facebook and a blender advertisement pops up. And then a little bit later, another blender and another blender. And it somehow knew she was looking for blenders, even though she never actually searched for a blender or went to a website that sold blenders, how did her phone know that she was looking for a blender? Well, there is a few settings depending on the phone you have, especially if you have a Google Pixel phone. Google Pixel phones are allowed to listen in on every phone call going in or out of the phone and monitor those phone calls for keywords like blender or shoes or something that you might be purchasing or looking for uh, or maybe something near you like, hey, we want to go do something, and now Google's going to know, hey, they're looking for something to do in their area. Let me show them a bunch of options. So that's really what it's trying to do. The Google Pixel phones are specifically designed to literally try and pick up on keywords that you're dropping through text messages, through social media, as well as through phone calls to that way streamline everything on your phone from advertisements to what you're gonna be purchasing next and possibly even suggesting other apps for you to use. Like maybe you're gonna buy some shoes, so it's gonna suggest you go to uh, like a specific shoe app to buy those shoes. So that is really what they're trying to do here. They're just trying to streamline and cut all the fat of the internet out to get you guys better searches. It's really all that's happening there. Uh, but how does that link to cookies? I'm gonna break all that down in just a second. Okay, one other thing we wanna talk about here is how the ad companies used to do things and how they have changed to doing things now. Cause that is a big part of the story that's being completely left out here. So how companies used to advertise back in the day uh, before the internet was usually through snail mail. So they would just throw a bunch of advertisements that were very general, usually lots of big letters, bright pictures, and giant banners with really good deals posted all over the place. And they'd send these out to whole communities in a city or sometimes just to plaster the whole city with them and everybody gets the same thing. And this is actually how the internet was when it first started, you got to see advertisements that were just blank general advertisements. If you were on a shopping website for like a grocery store, you'd have more centric ads for maybe something that they don't sell, like uh, exercise equipment or a subscription or medications or something. And then if you were on, let's say an exercise website, then they would sell you like pow protein powders and stuff, advertisements and things. So they were all kind of custom to the website that you went to. Uh, but again, they were super generalized and they were not specific to the user that was actually on the website trying to research things or, or figure things out. And so that's where these companies were like, yo, we have got to figure out a way to advertise to specific people 
and not to just whole communities of people. Like this, this has got to be way easier. Thus, where your cookies come in. So the companies decided, hey, they have records in every computer that show you not only what they're searching, what people are clicking on, but where they're going and looking to do on their computer is all stored in that cookie file, which is a tiny text-based file, and that explains everything. So when you go to Google and you start searching something, it's actually referencing your Google um, cookie file, which is telling it where your location is, what you've searched in the past, and what your kind of general preferences are for what you could be searching. Now, in my case, I'm a techie nerd, so it's always gonna try to give me techie nerdy research results. But if I just sign out of my own Google account and do the exact same search again, I will get completely different search results, and some of them might be the same, but for the most part, it's going to be general and specific to your tastes and needs. And that's not just Google. That's all of them. Facebook, Twitter, Walmart, Meyer, all of them. Every company that has an advertisement banner somewhere on their website, those banners use the cookie file to figure out all that history about you, the user, and then they customize those advertisements specifically to you, the user, even if that store isn't selling that product. Maybe you were looking at you know, mascara or something earlier, and uh, now you're looking at car parts for some reason. Uh, you know, maybe the mascara will be popping up near the car. I'm just saying, these are just random examples, and that's just how these search engines work. It's not necessarily eavesdropping because, again, they're not taking whole conversations and selling it to companies saying, here's a bunch of data. No, 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 no. It's not nothing like that at all. It just, it's kind of like a checklist of, they clicked on this website, they clicked on this, they bought that product from this website, it was shipped to this zip code in this area code kind of thing and that's all the information they're really getting they might get gender and a few other random things from uh, the text file but for the most part they're getting specifics as to what you're looking for what you're searching and then it compares to where you are and what's available around you as well all make a difference so keep that in mind and uh, that really sums up how your phone is not actually listening to you but it's really trying to help you not only get to your destination uh, better but just help you get through life just by listening for those key words so keep that in mind hey Google do you actually listen to everyone I'm designed to wait in standby until I detect an activation like when I hear hey Google the status indicator on your device lets you know when I'm activated now most of these devices like Google and Siri and whatnot have a shutoff device on the side as well so you can shut this little device off, off and now she'll even tell me the mic's off and the indicator does this as well I can't adjust the volume um, but that's pretty much all you can do um, you can't do anything else and I can't activate her anymore now that I have shut her off so I know a lot of people are wondering how do I disable these advertisement features and there is a way to do so you can dive into your computer settings and turn off personalized ads in your Microsoft computer and that will disable that uh, Apple does have a feature like this as well I am not trying to get to it but if I do find the link I'll post it in the link below or in the descriptions below um, as well as how to disable this in your uh, Apple phone as well as in your uh, Android phone as well. You can disable these features. They are not permanently locked on, uh, so don't panic. Uh, and again, they're only looking for those keywords, so if you're not saying keywords, then you're totally fine and you won't have these problems. But again, there's really nothing to worry about. These companies are not listening to whole conversations and recording them and sending them off to other companies. They just don't have the, the drive space for that. If they can't hold your pictures, they're not holding all this audio too. Just trust me on that. So. It just doesn't work that way, everybody. You can let your guard down a little bit there and just let the ads do what they're supposed to do. This is part of artificial intelligence just working its way into our lives. It's really no point in fighting it. Uh, we really should just be accepting it and, uh, and just go with the flow. So thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And uh, leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think. And uh, if you have any uh, videos you'd like to see us do, drop a comment below or shoot us at the email. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great week, and we will see you all next week. Take it easy, guys.
Hey Google, are you actually listening to us? Apparently not. <laughs>